here in the TVP series. Let's head into the game. It's going to be on Polar Knight. In the bottom middle position. That's the Red Terran. It is IVD's Apocalypse. <laughs> and spawning over to the top middle, the Blue Protoss. It is Invictus Gaming's Gym. I guess more Apocalypse fans than Gym fans. All right, Mike. Talk to me. What do you know about Jim? How do you like him? Is he cheesy like Max said? Well, he's a Chinese player. He's actually even cheesier than Max said. But <laughs> in PvT, not so much actually. In PvT, he likes to stick with his class at Phoenix. Just use those lasers, protect them, those lasers with his Phoenixes. With even more lasers. With even more lasers. See, that's the problem of last game. We needed Phoenixes to have more lasers. I don't think that would work. <laughs> I don't think so idea. either. So anyway. He doesn't cheese that much in this matchup. In PvZ, he has one of the cheesiest PvZ styles. Really? Some would say. At least he used to. I haven't seen him much, uh, except in the games he played in this WCS, since the previous WCS, but he used to anyways. Okay. Well, we can see Apocalypse is built. He's actually gone for, I believe, an 11-11 or a 12-12. I didn't actually see the, the count, but he got 12 barracks and the 12 refinery. This is just to uh, try to get your gas timed out as much as possible with this barracks. And that way, as soon as it finishes, you can pop out with a Reaper ASAP. Uh, but it's going to be Reaper expand. You know that. Yep. This is something that we've seen from him time and time again. Jim uh, is going to start out very standard, not going for the second assimilator. So he will be going for some sort of variation of a fast expansion. Probably a zealot to start things out. Normally you get a zealot in the beginning stages. Just to make sure you don't get eBay blocked. He could even skip that zealot though. Well, a lot of times you cancel it, for sure. Yeah, you let it build and then when the core finishes you cancel it to make it stalker. That's right. And that's just to see if your opponent made the eBay. Um, oh, and he's going to eBay block. But oh. I don't think this will work too well. His probe should see that, I think, and well, then I'll just let the Zealot finish. Some protesters actually cancel it before even watching. So hopefully he doesn't do that. And nope. it looks like he's not. So he gets the Mothership Core next, then gets the Stalker, I believe, and then he'll get the uh, Warp Gate. Yep. So this is just a stuff. Very, like, super, super, super duper standard. And from this, he just gets a very quick robotic facility as well. The Reaper is going to help out because the Mothership Core wants to be attacking that eBay, but it's not going to be. Mm -hmm. And it's just pulling the Command Center a little bit farther ahead relative to the Nexus, but it's not that much because if we look in the Income tab, there's going to be a lot of Harvesters committed. As soon as you see a Reaper, you're saying, I don't have to worry about any sort of pressure for the whole mid-game stage. I know for sure or to a good extent what my opponent is doing eBay will go down for Apocalypse. Nice cancel. I've seen some Terrans forget to cancel. That's sad. Not Jim. Not Jim. Well, not Apocalypse, actually. Well, not Jim either. He also didn't forget to cancel any eBays this game. <laughs> you got me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Varric's going down. I mean, this is the absolute most standard build that you can possibly do. As Terran, I would say. A very safe way to play this out. Uh, Jim, now, there's a couple of variations that you can do, but he's going for the Stargate variation. And normally we see Oracles pop out immediately. And then we'll see a Robo being put down pretty soon directly after that. No Phoenixes, and he starts to time out the Phoenixes as the, uh, as the Medivacs start to approach. So around, I would say, nine minutes is when he actually starts a lot of Phoenix production. And that's where he can really just take advantage of, uh, of the knowing his opponent's build. Just by this Reaper. That's what the Reaper does. It's nice. And any damage it gets done is extra damage. No, I'm saying the Reaper expand is bad. Oh, well. <laughs> I like it. I don't. It's good to scout. How else would you see these oracles? Yeah, but it pigeonholes you into a set of, uh, a set build order which you can't really stray from. A set build order which is very reactive to what your opponent does. And you can play so abusive. I mean, that's what uh, Jim is going to do. You're going to see him grow incredibly in this Harvester count. 
And then from there, he's going to get whatever composition he wants to. He has three stalkers out in the field in his zealot. Well, and that's all he's going to be getting. If Apocalypse knows what we do, though, I think he can guess which composition Jim will probably be getting out. Yes. I mean, he should have studied his opponent. That there's, and he has. Well, a turret is down. I mean, I'm not sure how much he studied Jim, though, because he did have his Premier League group today. That's true. And but that's what he was mostly practicing for, I bet. Hmm. You're right. A lot of times, especially when I was a pro gamer, I would I would look at other other races matchups like the for PVTs. I would look at other really strong pro gamers Protosses versus Terran, and I just go off of their builds to really understand that build. And if Apocalypse does that, I mean he's gonna have a very clear understanding of what to do. And I know you do that. What the heck? I study builds, yeah. But Jim coming into the, or sorry, uh, Apocalypse coming into this. He probably practiced for his Premier League group because if he yeah. wins that group or makes it out of that group, he doesn't even have to play gym. Well, don't you just study people in general? Like, you take some days just to study players and see what they're doing. Only if they're going to get a tournament I'm going to be at. Oh, really? Oh. Like, I'm not going to study, say, Innovation because one, I couldn't beat him even if I studied him, <laughs> and two, he's not going to be in any tournaments with me. <laughs> Lame. Uh, some marine pressure is going to be thwarted here. As a, a foot and overcharge is going to clean this up pretty easily. Or at least deter Apocalypse. Or should deter from Apocalypse. Oh! Mothership Core going down. Uh, that's something that you didn't expect. And he did some pretty good damage. A little bit bold from Apocalypse, but I like this. A lot of Protosses are uh, very abusive. They try to do a lot with nothing. And with this, he's able to supply cap one of the Colossi. He's able to supply cap one of the Phoenixes. And really put uh, his opponent in a really awkward position. Jim uh, got punished. No way, no two ways about that. He got got. <laughs> he did got got. All right, so from here, Jim is just going to build his gateway count. He builds his Colossus count, builds his Phoenix count, and I've seen him go like 13-minute forges. 13 minute forges. That means you will have 2 2 as a Terran, and Protest has 0 0. But it's all about those lasers. All about those lasers, the force field, and the Phoenixes that shoot more lasers. Two lasers. Actually, Colossus shoot two lasers too. Each Colossus shoots two lasers. Yeah. Well, each, each Phoenix shoots two lasers. Boom. Uh, a lot of passivity though so far. And you wouldn't expect anything else. Additional gateways being popped down. Jim is just getting all his essential upgrades and the right composition. And how would you defend this, or uh, attack this, I should say, if you're a Terran, Ghost User? Well, you need to be careful, because if you're not, you can lose some medevacs if you try medevac drops to Phoenixes. And he is coming in, though, and Jim doesn't expect this. He only has his Phoenixes in position. Oh, but one Phoenix goes down. Uh, his units aren't in position yet. Yeah, and this is game-ending damage right now. Nexus will not be cancelled. He loses almost all of his Phoenixes. Now his Stargate goes down. Will he be able to get out in time, though? That's the question. This is catastrophic oh. for someone playing gym style. Wow. I remember when he played Heart. Heart did a similar double medevac drop into Jim's main and picked off the Stargate. And then when Heart followed up with an SCV pull, Jim just didn't have enough Phoenixes to protect yep. his class eye. And maybe we'll see a repeat of that in this game. I mean, everything's going right for Apocalypse now. All, he's adding on his second star part, which is so important against this build. He's getting his essential upgrades. He's currently at 1-0, going to 1-1. One, one. Probably not going to add on his armory. And the reason why you don't add on the armory and get the double upgrades is because you want to invest into a major marauder army, not get so many marines, and get four Viking production every single time. Right now he's only at three because he doesn't have the add-on, but it'll come on pretty soon here. Uh, and I think Apocalypse is, is gearing up for the perfect timing against Jim, especially considering what's happened in the beginning stages. Jim will never, ever be able to really saturate his third base because of, uh, well, they got canceled in the beginning stage, and then Apocalypse has the perfect counter. Yeah, and losing that Stargate just hurts you so oh, much yeah. when you're going Class A Phoenix. You need that high Phoenix count to be able to protect your Class A, and... I mean, the Terran's going to counter you usually with a ton of Vikings, and you need a lot of Phoenixes. Usually, I think you want about as many Phoenixes as they have Vikings, is that correct? Uh, I, I really don't know. I'm not too well-versed in, in Phoenix, uh, Phoenix Colossus. 
because they think it's terrible. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure. Okay, so Apaka is pulling back, I guess. I just wasn't sure if he could take that fight. But well, he's I, taking it pretty well. I mean, even actually, with the four, four uh, Vikings, he's able to take out one of the Colossus. Now moving forward, able to snipe out the second one, but he will probably have to back out of here. But the trade actually works out really well as the colossus player doesn't want to be trading like that, or trading at all. You, you want to be waiting for that 200-200 army, and that's where you're really strong. At the uh, smaller stages, you're just hoping that you have the better execution at that point. Yeah. But it gets really, really tough. Now Jim just looks like he's behind. Yeah, because the growth of Terran is just so much faster. And Apocalypse has a fourth base finishing behind this. He likes to make these kind of aggressive fourth bases in TVP. And kind of a TBT as well, more so than other Terran players. He always pretty much makes them at the additional base in TVP. Hmm. I guess that just speaks to his style. Like he likes to be bold. But he also is very light with uh, his air, whatever it is. Or yeah. not his air, but his like his secondary units, whether it's ghosts or vikings, he always goes very sparse into them and goes to the more marine marauder heavy compositions. Which kind of speaks to this style where you are taking a lot more map control than anything else. Um, maybe you don't have the right units, but at least you're able to uh, to just get the right concave and, and rely on your your micro rather than your compositions. It's just a different way to play. Uh, now a drop going down in the main base. It's 1-1 uh, against 0-0 still. And you can see no forge is out on the field for our Protoss hero here. And these, uh, these Marines are going to get cleaned up eventually to the Colossus, the single Colossus, able to... Uh, yeah, the single Colossus is able to take this out. Uh, but not after taking a lot of damage. And I'm worried for Jim, man, because the Unis tab now is approaching a pretty scary Viking count. Nope, I was just kidding. It should have been. He's making a lot of medevacs too, though, so that's kind of slowing down his production. He does have double star ports with the reactors on them. So he can produce Vikings four at a time. And this can be a crushing blow here once again. Jim just doesn't look like he has that many units out now. No, he doesn't. It's 159 supply to 199, or 188 rather. And here's the split. The Colossus shots are good in the beginning stage. He's focusing down the Colossus. There's two left. But is there enough bio? Uh, I think so, as he starts to push forward. A good micro only sending in his, his, uh, his marauders, and that's going to do it. Jim only has air units, and now sending in his probes. I mean, there's no way that he can actually deal with this. The Marines targeting down the Phoenixes. GG gets called Apocalypse.